Okay, so today I'm going to go over the Torque app and how to set it up for your Power Stroke. Um, I'm going to set it up for a 7.3, um, but it'll work on just about any vehicle really, but uh, you can also configure it to work on other Power Strokes as well. Uh, so the first thing you're going to have to do is uh, set up your Bluetooth um, dongle. So you're going to do that in adapter settings. Now mine is not hooked up right now. Um, so what you want to do is you want to make sure Bluetooth is enabled. You want to make sure Bluetooth is enabled, that it's connected, and that it, most importantly it's connected to the truck. Uh, if you're displaying errors and everything should be working, you might have to troubleshoot. Uh, but this is where you would do it. Um, like I said, mine's not connected right now. So back in the home screen, the next thing you're going to have to do is you have to go to settings, scroll down to manage extra PIDs slash sensors. Hit menu, add predefined set, and forward including power stroke. Now that's going to put, bring up a, a whole list of a bunch of uh, custom PIDs and stuff for power strokes. Now you can also search the internet and find more uh, custom PIDs. You're going to have to put those in manually. The way you're going to do that is go ahead and hit the menu button, add custom PID, and then you're going to type in all of the information in here that you find on the internet. Um, basically it's a copy and paste. It's pretty easy. Um, but I'm not going to show you that just because I don't have any of those uh, pulled up right now. So that's how you would do that. So you can cancel that, go back to the main menu. Uh, while we're here, uh, this is also where you would do all of your um, your customization and stuff. Um, most of this is just user preference, so go through here, get it exactly how you want, um, get it set up the way you want it, and, uh, and get it working well. Uh, the other thing I do want to show you is dash install settings. Um, if you have a radio that is, is Android, you can actually load torque onto this, onto that, and uh, this is where you would use the settings for that. Um, manage alarms. Um, so you can see I've got one here for temperature, or transmission temperature. Um, this is, you can add alarms so that if you go to a certain point uh, above a certain temperature or uh, something like that, you can, you can have that set up that way. Um, so like I said, go through here, get everything set up the way you want it. Um, so one thing that you can do on Torque is fault codes. And so you'd hit fault codes and hit tap. It's not going to work, obviously, because it's not connected. So you'd hit the magnifying glass. It would search. It would pull up any codes. And it, it'll, it'll list them right here. And it'll say, like, the, the code number, then the name. And you can click on them, and it'll bring up some information about it. Okay, so it'll bring it up. What you can do is you can hit menu. You can clear the codes if you do have clo uh, do have codes. You can save logs, set, um, load the logs. You can share them. You can even search codes if you want to, like uh, like uh, P1280 is one that'll come up sometimes. Um, which it doesn't come up. Uh, what that is, it's an ICP sensor out of out of. Um, low circuit, your bad ICP sensor, but you can see it, it hasn't come up on here. Uh, let's try another one. P0680, which is a glow plug control module code. Okay, it didn't come up. So like I said, uh, it's, it's only going to bring, it'll bring up the codes, but if it doesn't know what it is, uh, it's not going to be able to do anything. Um, and also it's not going to pull up the Ford specific codes, so I'm going to pull up some basic codes. We'll go back here. Um, we'll go to real-time information, which is the fun stuff. So here you can see I've got a, uh, a page set up for off-roading. Um, now, one thing I want to note here is you can see how the roll meter and the um, and the pitch meter they're not uh, they're not correct right now. So say you've got it set up the way you want it. Hit the menu button. Hit calorie accelerometer, and it's going to bump those back to zero. Um, but this is cool because it shows you all the different gauges you can have and stuff. Um, let me go down here to this one's kind of my driving around a diagnostic one. Um, you know, you can set up however you want um, your your pages set up. So what I'll do, let me come up to a blank screen. Okay. And so the way you add a gauge is hit the menu button, go ahead and hit Add Display, 
and these are all the different gauges that you can have okay there's a lot of a lot of different gauge types um, but we'll just go do a dial needle let's do speed so these are all the uh, gauges you can have um, so you can see some are black some are green some are dark green um, if they're black that means they're not active if they're dark green like torque is down here that means um, that it is an active sensor but it's not receiving any data and the green the light green is it is an active sensor and it is receiving data now you can see that we have GPS and OBD for speed that means that uh, it's either pulling speed from the Android device in this case or the OBD sensor um, for the other one. So we'll pull up GPS speed, add display, let's do engine RPM. Okay, so I chose the wrong size. I want it to be large. So what you can do is you can hold down on it, display configuration, change display, whoops, display configuration, change size, and go to large. Okay, let's add two more. Let's do, let's do graph. Injector control pressure. Let's do large. Set that right there. And one more. Let's do digital display whoops okay let's do go down here to uh, IPR duty cycle large okay and I just wanted to do that so you can see the different kind of gauges and stuff so now let's custom keep customizing we'll do GPS speed uh, display configuration um, do maximum value you know I'm not going up to 160 miles an hour so let's do 100, and that just allows the gauge to be more, more accurate. Um, we'll go to HPOP PSI, display configuration, change title. Um, we'll do ICP, okay. So now it's going to change that to ICP PSI. We can also change that to maximum of 3,000. Okay, display configuration, maximum value, 5,000, whoops, not 500, 5,000. Okay, so if you look at GPS speed, you'll see that it's got a little red arrow down at the bottom and a green square. The uh, red arrow indicates your peak. Um, so say you hit 60 miles an hour on a trip, uh, that's going to be it's going to be at right at 60. So you can actually reset that by going up, holding down on it, hit rec reset recorded min max times, and so you can see that arrow move down. And then the green square indicates that the sensor is active, just like how if you go to add display, how it's how they're green over here. It's the same thing. It's just letting you know that's an active sensor. Also, one thing I want to note while I'm right here is the uh, the tachometer right here. You notice it's per thousand RPMs, not just RPMs. So I should actually change the maximum value not to five thousand, but to five. There you go. Okay. Okay. So you're getting kind of an idea of all the fun stuff you can do. Um, we'll do right now. We'll set. We'll set an alarm on GPS just because that's the one that's reading right now. Um, a low warning, okay? That just because that's what's going to work um, for demonstration purposes. So we'll do a warning of below 10, below 10 miles per hour. You can see the GPS speed is now flashing. Um, you can do that with any gauge to kind of set an alarm, um, but I just did it for, with this one for demonstration purposes. Okay. So you can see that's kind of how you set up your 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 gauges, and you can change change them if you want to. Um, you can also layer them. Like I'll hit bring to front, 
and then move, and then I can bring it over the other gauges. You can you can mess around with these quite a bit. Um, you can even you know do Facebook and stuff. Um, so what I'm going to show you how to do is go back to the main menu, go to settings, and then do data logging and upload. Select what to upload. And you can see here I've got several things already set. Engine RPM speed, ICP, IPR, boost, horsepower, etc., etc. Okay, so the way you do that is you hit the menu button, you hit add PID to log, and it's just all of your normal PIDs and sensors that we were looking at on the other screen. Okay, so you can you can select whatever you want. Okay, so add those. Go back to real time information. Okay. Let me go down to a screen that's set up for this. Okay, here we go. So let's go back to our screen here. Okay, and so what, what you're going to do is once you set up um, what to log, go ahead and hit the menu button, start logging, and you can see it says trip logging enabled. Okay, so I'm going to let that go for a few minutes. Nothing should be logging, everything should be zero because nothing's doing anything right now. It's not even connected to a truck and just hit stop logging. Okay. So once you've done that, go ahead and go back to the main menu. And you can do uh, map view. Okay. Now mine's not going to pull up anything because I have it set to delete any um, logs less than uh, half a mile. So none have come up. But what'll happen is it'll come up with your information. It'll it's a heat map, and you can do um, a heat map for speed, altitude, any of the parameters that you've set. Um, you can then display on the on the map here. Um, we'll go, also go back to this. You can email your logs to yourself. Um, See, so I've got three logs here, so I could email that new log to myself right here and uh, KML lines and points that's something used in, in Google whoops anyway so that's what, what I was saying that's something used in Google Earth and that's to plot on a map um, if you want to collect raw data like we're doing um, you're gonna want the CSV file um, but if you're doing off-road mapping and stuff KML is what you're gonna want to use um, but for us we're gonna use CSV files email it to yourself or whoever um, and then you can put it on your computer that way um, another way to look at it is we're gonna go ahead and close torque app go to my files and here you can see is torque logs okay so go ahead and open your torque log and it's gonna have all those PIDs and sensors that we were logging you can see these are all the GPS settings that it's gonna do originally but here we have Engine RPM, engine speed, ICP, IPR, you know, etc., etc. Okay, so there you can see all of your your data. So go ahead and go back to the Torque app. Okay, so this is one of the screens that I believe comes uh, preset on the Torque app, and it has your zero to sixty quarter eight mile times and stuff like that. Uh, what's going to happen is uh, when you start moving, um, it's going to sense that, and it's going to start recording and time you, um, whether you're doing a lap run or not, it's just gonna start automatically. Um, and then whenever you reach zero to 60 or your quarter or eighth mile, uh, it's gonna record that time. So it's really nice if you're at a strip, you don't have to start anything, it's just gonna do it on its own. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, so this is a really cool app to just kind of mess around with. Um, you can log all kinds of data points and uh, it's a really good diagnostic um, program. So uh, that's all I have for you, really. Um, I hope this is enough to kind of get you started and start messing around with it on your own. Um, it's it's a really great app. Um, it's only a couple bucks. I, I urge you to get the, the pro version. Um, it's got a lot more in it. Um, so just start working on it. Um, have some fun. And hopefully I've, I've given you enough to try and get started with it.